Hello Vital Sign. Today we're going to go over a challenge problem from my last video. So if you haven't seen it yet, check out my last video for more information. Here's a quick recap. We start with a line of vertices like this and connect each one to the next like that. This is our base graph. Then consider this graph. We start with the same line of vertices connecting each one to the next except we will now also connect each vertex to the one two down the line. We could call this skip two as we start with our base graph and connect vertices that are two edges apart from each other as well. We could also have chosen to start with the base graph and just add connections between vertices that are three edges apart from each other. The challenge is, what is the distance between the first and last vertex in any of the skip x graphs of size n? And a little harder, what is the diameter of any given skip x graph of size n. Now where do we begin with something like this? I think it's best to focus on the first question of distance between the first and last vertex. It's a good idea to draw some skip x graphs of various sizes and skip lengths and calculate their distances. Once we have some observations, we'll be able to figure out the pattern. Let's begin. How about our base graph? What is the distance between the first and last vertex of our base graph? Well, in this case, it's just the number of edges in the graph, which is one less than the number of vertices. In general, this is the number of edges in the graph and can be represented visually like this. Therefore, for our base graph of size n, the first last distance is going to be n minus 1. How about for skip 2 graphs? What's the distance between the first and last vertex of a skip 2 graph with 5 vertices? Well, the distance is just 2 in this case, as we skip 2 to 3 and skip 2 to the fifth and final vertex. What about a skip 2 graph with 6 vertices? Well, taking the biggest steps we can, we can get to the fifth vertex in 2 steps. But there isn't any way to get to the sixth vertex in 2 steps. Even if we go forwards 1 step, to get our big steps in line with the sixth vertex, we're still adding one step to the path no matter what we do. So the distance between the first and sixth vertices is three. Now consider the general skip two graph of size n. If n is odd, or in other words, if n is one mod two, we can reach the last vertex from the first vertex in n minus one over two steps. You can think of it as taking the difference between an odd number and 1, and then dividing by 2 to find the number of times 2 must be added to 1 to get our original odd number. If n is even, then according to our last slide, we can get to the penultimate vertex in n minus 2 over 2 steps, treating it as a last vertex in a graph of n minus 1 or odd vertices. Now to get to the ultimate vertex, takes another step no matter what we do. So if n is even, the distance between the first and last vertex is just n over 2 minus 1 plus 1, or n over 2. Next, consider the skip 3 graph of size 7. Skipping 3 from 1, we can get to the fourth vertex in one step, and then skipping 3 again, we can get to the seventh vertex in just two steps. What do these numbers 1, 4, and 7 have in common? They are 1 mod 3, so all numbers 1 mod 3 can be reached by the first vertex just by taking the biggest possible steps our graph allows. Therefore, if n is 1 more than a number divisible by 3, we can reach it in some number of skip 3 steps. To get to the 7th vertex, it took us 2 steps, and to get to the 4th vertex, it took 1 step. So it seems promising that n minus 1 over 3 would be the expression we're looking for if n is 1 mod 3. So why does n minus 1 over 3 work? We are subtracting 1 from a number n that is 1 mod 3 to get the number, say, s that was added to 1 in order to get n. And s was added to 1 in sets of 3s. So by dividing by 3, we get the number of skip 3 steps needed to get us from our first to last vertex. So what about a skip 3 graph of size 8? This time, n equals 8 equals 2 mod 3. Well, in this case, we know that we can get to the penultimate vertex 
in n minus 2 over 3 steps found by treating the seventh vertex as the last vertex in a 1 mod 3 graph. And how about a skip 3 graph of size 9? This time, n equals 0 mod 3. Again, treating the seventh or third to last vertex as the last vertex in a 1 mod 3 graph, we find that we can get to the third to last vertex in n minus 3 over 3 or n over 3 minus 1 step. Then we could take two steps to the right to give us n over 3 plus 1 steps or one step backwards and a skip 3 leap forward also giving us n over 3 plus 1 steps. However we do it, we can't get any shorter than that. So when n is 0 mod 3, the distance between the first and last vertex is n over 3 plus 1, or in this case, 4. Now let's just examine one more type of graph, skip 4 graphs. So for n equals 5, or 1 mod 4, we can get to the last vertex in 1 step, or n minus 1 over 4 steps. I encourage you to think about why this is true. For size n equals 6, or 2 mod 4, we can get to the second to last vertex in 1 step, or the last vertex in 2 steps, which is n minus 2 over 4 plus 1. For n equals 7, or 3 mod 4, we can get to the third to last vertex in 1 step, or the last vertex in 3 step, which is n minus 3 over 4 plus 2. And finally, when n equals 8, or 0 mod 4, we can get to the 4th to last vertex in 1 step. But then watch what happens. We can step backwards and then skip 4 ahead to get to the last vertex. This means that we can get to the last vertex in n over 4 plus 1 steps, or in this example, 3 steps. And if you think about it, this happens for any skip x graph where n is 0 mod x. We can always get to the x to last vertex in n minus x, over x step, or n over x minus 1 step. And then we can always take one step backwards to get in line, and then take one skip forwards, meaning that the last vertex is always reached in n over x plus 1 steps for a skip x graph of size n. Interesting. Now I'm going to do this for skip 5 through skip 10. We can't do them all in video because it would take too long, so I'll do it and then show you the results. I invite you to pause the video and work out a few or all of these for yourself. So here are the results for skip x graphs of size n, where n is 0 mod x through x minus 1 mod x. An interesting pattern has emerged in the constants we add to the fraction term. Let's examine why this pattern arises. It looks like we always have this n minus something over x term, and then a constant, and the constants go up until a certain point and then go back down, depending on the value of n mod x. Here's the intuition for why this is. In a skip x graph of size n, where n is a mod x, you can always get to the last 1 mod x vertex in the graph in n minus a over x steps. Let's examine this in a skip 6 graph. In a skip 6 graph of size n, we can always get to the last 1 mod 6 vertex in n minus a over x steps, or in this case, one step. If that happens to not be the last vertex, as is the case in this example, then we can proceed in two ways to reach the final vertex from the final 1 mod 6 vertex. One, we can go right from the last 1 mod 6 vertex, or two, we can go left from the vertex until we are able to skip forward to our final vertex. When the graph is a relatively high number mod x, for instance 5 mod 6, it is quicker to get directly to the last 1 mod 6 vertex and then take one or two steps left and then skip 6 forward to arrive at our last vertex than it would be to tediously step right from the last 1 mod 6 vertex until we reach the final vertex. However, when the graph is a relatively low number mod x, such as 2 mod 6 in this example, it is quicker to just step right from our last 1 mod 6 vertex to get to our final vertex than to step left until we can skip forwards. In generalizing, using a skip 6 graph to visualize, this shows that in a skip x graph of size n, 
where n is a mod x, we can get to the last one mod x vertex in n minus a over x steps. And if the last vertex is not one mod x, then from there, we have two paths that we can take. We can go right from the last one mod x vertex, or we can go left until we can skip forward to the last vertex. When the graph is a high number mod x, then for the last few vertices, it is quicker to step left and then skip right. On the other hand, if the graph is a relatively low number mod x, it is quicker to just step right a few times than to take many steps backward and then skip forward. And this is the reason for a pattern of increasing and then decreasing constants. In the beginning, for one mod x or two mod x, it is quicker to take the step right path to reach our final vertex from the final one mod x vertex. Yet at a certain point, it becomes quicker to use the step left and then skip right method. But where exactly does this switch occur? Well, we can write an expression to determine the distance to our final vertex using the two methods of step right or step left and skip forward. First, for both methods, we need to remember that in a skip x graph of size n, where n is a mod x, the distance between our first vertex and the final one mod x vertex is n minus a over x. We can call this value c. Now using the step right method to reach our last vertex, the distance is c plus a minus 1, as a minus 1 is just the number of times we need to step right upon reaching our last 1 mod x vertex. And now using the step left skip right method, the distance is c plus x minus a plus 2. This is because once we travel c, or 1 in this case, we need to take one step to get to the 0 mod x vertex, and then x minus a, or 6 minus 2, steps to get to the vertex that is a mod x, from which we can then skip right, taking one more step to get to the last vertex. That is c steps plus 1 step plus x minus a steps plus 1 step, or c plus x minus a plus 2 steps. In this example, that would be 7 steps. Now let's create an inequality to find out where the turning point is, where c plus a minus 1 is greater than c plus x minus a plus 2. Step left, skip right method is faster. Let's solve this inequality now. So when a is greater than x over 2 plus 1.5, the second method, that is step left until we can skip right, is actually faster. And when a is less than x over 2 plus 1.5, the first method, just stepping right until we get to the last vertex from the 1 mod x vertex, is faster. Be careful. a can only be a whole number, as n is a whole number and x is a whole number, and we defined a to be the remainder when n is divided by x. When x is even, x over 2 plus 1.5 is not a whole number, meaning that for skip even graphs, there is no point at which the two methods are equal. The turning point is still at a equals x over 2 plus 1.5. And if we plug in x over 2 plus 1 for a, meaning it's stepping right is the fastest method, we get a distance of c plus x over 2. And if we plug in x over 2 plus 2 for a, meaning that stepping left and skipping right is the fastest method, we get a distance of c plus x over 2. That explains why in skip even graphs, our constant reaches a maximum and stays there for one more value. And in skip odd graphs, x over 2 plus 1.5 is a whole number. And since the constants for the first method are increasing and the constants for the second method are decreasing, and since they equal each other at a equals x over 2 plus 1.5, then a equals x over 2 plus 1.5 is the maximum constant. That is, there is a unique value of a that brings the maximum constant for skip odd graphs. And this is verified by our observation. And we now have a formula for the distance between the first and last vertex in a skip x graph of size n, where n is a mod x. If a is less than x over 2 plus 1.5, then the distance is found by this form. And if a is greater than x over 2 plus 1.5, then the distance is found by that form. And that's it. In a future video, I'll cover the diameter of these skip graphs, as well as what happens when you skip A and skip B at the same time. For example, see the skip 3 and skip 5 graph that I've shown here.
I challenge you to think about the diameter of the skip graphs as well as the distance and diameter for skip A, skip B graphs on your own. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like, share, and comment. Have a great day.